What a difference a day makes. 36 hours ago, this Walmart warehouse was fully engulfed in flames, sending massive clouds of smoke miles into the sky. And now, this is all that's left behind. A mangled building, scattered ash, and a lot of questions. Thanks for inviting us in tonight at 11. We're going to get to the environmental investigation and the help on the way for all the workers. But tonight at 11, our Lauren Costa kicks off our team coverage with the current obstacle facing investigators at that scene. Well, Scott, the big challenge right now is getting inside the building. As you can see, crews are still out here 36 hours later, and they've been working all day to manage the hot spots. And most recently, trying to move some of these semis because that's the tricky part. Investigators can't go inside until the building cools down and is structurally safe. More than 24 hours after the massive fire, crews continue to rotate in and out, battling the many hot spots in the warehouse. It's trying to gain more access into the building, getting some of our obstacles moved, the trailers and that stuff, so we, we can just continue to put out what we can from, from a safe vantage point. As crews monitor the rubble, investigators are trying to piece together what happened, but are still waiting to gain access. I'm going to say at the earliest is going to be tomorrow before the investigators can get in and even start to take a look. In the meantime, employees were able to pick up cars and belongings, many still in disbelief. It was very scary. It was almost something out of a movie and everyone was running and panicking and it, it was pretty scary. For Haley Banks, it was her first official week on the job. She remembers hearing the alarm, but thought it was another drill since they just had one last week. The only thing I remember seeing is I look up in a big black cloud of smoke is coming from on top of the building and um, and then I think that's when we all kind of knew it was real. And for the 24 departments who assisted, many say this is the most challenging operation they've been a part of. This is the largest fire that I can remember in my firefighting career here in Central Indiana. That's why the community and volunteers are stepping in to help, providing food and water to first responders. When there's a problem, you call them, they come out here, and the least we can do is be here and support them when they need it. Currently, the Salvation Army is helping during the day and the American Red Cross is helping at night with no plans of leaving anytime soon. Well, we'll probably be here 24 seven as long as they need us. As everyone waits for answers, employees and first responders are just relieved that everyone made it out safely. We are all relieved by that, certainly. And Lauren, you learned that fire crews near the scene that day were actually training for an event just like this when that blaze started? Yeah, the training was actually about warehouse construction and dealing with a fire just like this. That's why the fire chief told us, you know, they do trainings like this often because, well, you never know when an event like this will happen, Scott. Yeah, those fire crews did an amazing job and continue to put in great work. Lauren, thanks. With the scope of this fire and how quickly it engulfed the building, it really is incredible that all 1,000 employees got out safe. So we're talking a 1.2 million square foot building, and like Lauren mentioned, employees had a fire drill just last week. One worker who's been at the warehouse for five years told us they take each exercise very seriously. When that alarm goes off, they want us out, and we go out. And then they count us, the managers, and make sure everybody's out. And when you come back in, they got, you got to scan your badge and everything. They're on it with that. We couldn't get details on how frequently each warehouse is supposed to do emergency training or what those exercises entail, but we do know it helped employees in this situation get home safely. And another bit of peace of mind for these employees today. Walmart gave more details about what's next for their jobs and their paychecks. Walmart plans to pay each person 40 hours plus overtime after activating a disaster pay program. They're also looking to relocate workers at nearby stores and warehouses. Walmart also has assistance on site at the warehouse as employees come back to get all their belongings. Everything from a locksmith for people who lost their keys to food and hygiene products. Now, what about all the smoke the warehouse fire sent up into the air? People living nearby are understandably concerned about potential health impacts. IDEM and other agencies are out there right now investigating. And tonight, our Emily Longnecker talked with an environmental expert to get more insight. 
We'll take a look. This is some of the debris that's found in people's yards about five miles away from where Wednesday's fire happened. Now we talked to an environmental expert who told us if you find some of this debris from the fire in your yard, don't touch it. Just leave it there because you don't know what's in it or what you could be exposing yourself to. The bigger concern right now, though, is air quality. People who are experiencing breathing difficulties and so forth, that's because of all of these fine particulates that were released when this, all this material burned at very high temperature. Professor Gabriel Filippelli with IU's Environmental Resiliency Institute says right now air quality sensors inside the 465 loop are showing high levels of air pollution because of Wednesday's fire. That's led to experts advising folks to act like they would on any other day with heavy air pollution in a no zone action day. Probably try to stay inside a little bit more uh, than you typically would um, and try to minimize um, uh, exercise, especially vigorous exercise. That's what Joe Gallagher did. We've stayed inside all day, so and we probably will until they say the coast is clear. Right outside Gallagher's home, this device to measure air quality, he says the EPA set up. I could tell today the breeze was blowing some of it away. The fog isn't near as bad as it was this morning. Just down the street, Hannah Foxworthy was careful too. She has asthma. Yesterday it was kind of hard for me to breathe. Today it's not as bad. Hannah says she used a mask when it got too hard to breathe. I figured with everything going on, the air quality was not going to be great. <laughs> Professor Filippelli says that's the way to go. All the things we did for COVID, like an N95 mask, they work phenomenally for particulates. But don't worry, Filippelli says, it won't be for the long haul. If we get a weather front that moves through, those particulates will move up and, and move away, blow downwind and get diluted. 